and the same command we'll move the horizontal lines to their correct locations use O snap and start moving Let's see. Now this is an interesting command. It's called smart, uh, sm or interesting new feature called smart track in Rhino. If you are moving something and you w and now I want it to you know be vertical to you know the midpoint here, what I can do is hover over until I see a white little uh, cursor point in there, and that is your smart track. Now you see there's a smart guide that that pops up and you can move your lines accordingly. Same command now, go to the midpoint and we'll smart track and approximately lay those curves in. <clears throat> Alright, so now we've got all these dimension points uh, listed in here and I'm gonna go ahead and hide the background bitmap and assign some different layers to these dimensions to remove any confusion that might arise from um, having uh, the same color. So I'm going to assign them to layer 2 or layer 1 here and I'm going to call that dimensions and um, now we can start laying in a rough curve here. I want to double double confirm these dimensions so I'm going to dimension 2.75 6 and 6.5. All right. Let me just see that background bitmap again. Four and a quarter, three and a quarter, three and a quarter. All right, that was the dimension that I wasn't sure about. <clears throat> also, this is actually a good time to to put in a rough present representation of the ball. If we look at our cheat sheet, um, it says that the the ball needs to have a circumference of seven and three quarters inches or eight or or eight to eight inches in circumference. So eight equals pi times diameter. So eight divided by pi is equal to the diameter. So eight multiplied by seven divided by twenty two, fifty six divided by twenty two is the um, diameter of the ball. So let's go ahead and put a ball in here which is 56 56 divided by 22 inches in diameter. And I'm going to move that using the O snap to quadrant and snap that to the endpoint of that dimension point there. So now we have a representation of the ball and I'm going to change the object layer here. So now we've got the ball on a purple layer and actually since the the balls are actually supposed to be white, yellow, orange or lime green, I'm going to go and assign a lime green lime green color to this ball layer. <clears throat> and going to make it a little bit more three-dimensional. And again, we're working in 2D. We're not really starting anything 3D yet. We're trying to keep it as simple as we can. And invoke the rotate command and rotate through Hello, 90 degrees, which didn't seem to work. Okay, didn't have a copy. 
Control C, Control V. Let's double check that there is a. Yep. And rotate. Actually, let's snap to the center here. Center, and there you go. Now we have a decent representation of the ball. Go back to the top view, and I'm going to start to lay in a curve that wraps around all these horizontal lines that we've put in here. And before we do that, going to assign the horizontal dimensions to the dimension layer. <coughs> And I'm actually going to hide that layer. Well, actually, I will need it for that top point here. And I'll go ahead and start some curves. We're trying to keep this as simple as possible. And notice I, I hit Shift um, to get the second uh, control point tangent, or I guess horizontal, to uh, the beginning. If you want something to be uh, to be um, a curve to be smooth around um, a midplane, then you want to make sure that your your CV points or your edit points in this case are um, um, they come in at uh, perpendicular to to the midplane. And we're going to try and use the minimal amount of curve uh, edit points to define this curve. and use smart track to create the penultimate and endpoint here and if you hit F10 that'll turn your um, your uh, control points on and if you've noticed I actually don't have a lot of uh, toolbars in fact I don't have any um, any uh, any on here right now and that's because I've put in all my uh, toolbars or all my commonly used toolbars into my pop-up toolbar which is accessed by um, I believe the middle mouse um, middle mouse click I use my Wacom pen so I I've, I've completely switched over from mouse to Wacom pad and so I've, I've mapped these differently so I have to remember what's middle mouse click so anyway it's it's uh, middle mouse click access the pop-up and what's really useful about this is that I don't have to navigate all the way to the edges of the screen to access my commands this way it's you know it's it's all it's all here at one click and and that these little little things like that tend to um, save you a bunch of time in in the long run and that's that's what I find to be the differentiator between a lot of professional work and and student work is that uh, most of the professionals that I know, you know, tend to use you know a lot of software shortcuts. They know all the the ins and outs of of um, you know how to use their software, and they've become really um, uh, you know finely tuned as to how they can be as efficient as possible in their particular software. And I've mapped out my mirror command to um, a keyboard shortcut but um, if you are following along you'd want to go transform mirror O oh, snap to the endpoint and hit shift and you've got a rough um, shape right now for the uh, lacrosse head I'm going to tune that just a little bit so that it hugs the circle a little bit nicer. Actually, I'm going to add another control point in here, and that's in your edit point editing toolbar. Hit OK, and turn on the control points, and you've got an extra control point in here. Um, with curves, you want to use the minimal amount of edit points uh, 